physics we are discussing about laser and optical fiber myself sandeep desai department of basic science and humanities kids college of engineering kolhapur in this session we are going to discuss few very important phenomena and steps which are required to form the laser in our previous session we were discuss about the interaction of radiation with matter in which we discussed about absorption spontaneous emission and stimulated emission and we understood that how stimulated emission is going to amplify the light and it becomes the basic principle for the formation of laser now you see stimulated emission is not only enough to form the laser or to get the laser light there are few more lasing actions which are necessary to know so we can understood how laser that is get formed so in this session we are going to discuss about those lasing actions first of all we should understood the population inversion this is again very important step uh, for the formation of laser now by these two words population inversion can you able to guess that what it could be about wh whom's population we are talking here and what we mean by inversion think about it yes so again to understand this let us consider this two energy level diagram as previously also we were discuss atoms you know that they are try to be remain in ground energy level so their number is more in ground energy level the population we are yes we are talking about the population of atoms and this population of atoms you find that is greater or more in even energy level compared to the number of atoms which are present in excited energy level let us say that n1 as the population of atoms in this even energy level and let us say n2 as the population of atoms in this e2 energy level so at normal conditions or equilibrium we can have the relation between these two as n1 that is greater greater than n2 right n1 is greater greater than n2 that is the general situation now if we go with this situation do you think that can we get laser light out of this uh, situation or means you see that if there are number of atoms which are present in this excited state are very few and if you do here stimulated emission let's say of few those excited state atoms can it is going to give you an amplified light which we need to get here obviously not by few number of stimulated emissions we may not get a very very amplified or intense light or we can say that laser light is not that possible it means to get a laser light and amplified light it is very important to have more and more number of stimulated emission and if more and more stimulated emission you want definitely atoms their number should be greater or more in this excited energy level that we need to have if there are very few atoms we may not get more number of stimulated emission so to get more and more stimulated emission of radiation it is very important to have the number of atoms in excited state that should be larger that should be more compared to ground energy level as you see here so we need this situation so what happens here you see the population initially what do you have here this one population that we are going to reverse we are going to invert it means we make n2 greater greater than that of n1 and this particular state is nothing but called as population inversion so here we are going to invert reverse the population generally what we have for a stable system and that is most required condition that is that is must required condition we have for the formation of laser light 
I hope you understood. Now to have this population inversion, we need to do a pumping. So pumping is again a important process that to know because from stable state, again let us see this from stable state, if anybody is stable, why it itself go to unstable state? No, nobody want to be in uh, unstable state for a long time already we were discussed, you know that. So atoms which are in stable state by themselves, they may not go in excited state to uh, to reach that population inversion condition. So it means that here you need to supply some energy, some external energy so that by absorbing this energy, the atom from ground state, they are get lifted, they are get transited to excited state and we can achieve the population inversion condition. So in and all, we can say pumping is a process in which we provide energy so that atoms from ground state get excited to higher energy state and population inversion that would be achieved. So this is pumping, this process is called as pumping. Now what kind of energy that you provide to pump these atoms based on there are certain types of uh, pumping we have like if you do the pumping with the help of light then we can call it as optical pumping where you can use light energy. Okay for pumping then if you use uh, some electrical energy like battery or cell in certain laser that we use so then that pumping is called as electrical pumping sometimes in some laser chemical energy is used so that we can call it as chemical pumping so these are what we have different types of pumping now we do pumping but you see if you go with our previous understanding of spontaneous emission and all then you may have a question that does really population inversion happens in that excited state? So here to make you understood the where actually population inversion is actually achieved, we need to understood the state called as metastable state. What is actually metastable? By this word itself again we understood metastable state is what? So metastable state is actually an intermediate state we have where stability, stability means the lifetime for which atom rest that is more, that should be more. So that state is metastable state. Let us understand that with an energy level diagram. So let's see E1 is lower energy level, E2 is the excited or higher energy level and as with the previous understanding we do what we do pumping we lift the atoms to excited state but you know that these atoms in this e2 energy level rest or they remain here for very short duration approximately 10 to minus 8 second so what happens to these atoms so these atoms maybe few of them directly come down to the ground state but most of them you see they actually get transited to an intermediate state let's say E3 E3 is an intermediate energy level or state what happens these excited atoms they are fall down by radiating some energy in various forms to an intermediate state and they remain in this intermediate state for very long time about 10 raised to minus 3 second that is almost 1 lakh time greater than that of this excited state means as atoms we live to excited state to this E2 state immediately in this time span they transited to an intermediate state by radiating energy in either in form of heat or some other form of energy and they remain in this intermediate state for 10 raised to minus 3 seconds. So definitely we can say the more and more items will be accumulated in this intermediate state. So the actual population inversion, population inversion that happens in this metastable state. And after that what happens you know spontaneous and stimulated emission all that things happens to produce a laser light. So metastable state in short we can say an intermediate state where population inversion is achieved and atoms uh, stay there for longer duration around 10 raised to minus 3 second. Next important arrangement that we have to do in formation of laser is to make a resonating cavity. It is again very important to make because as we want to get an intense light, highly intense and directional light, resonating cavity is must. So, 
uh, all the processes previous processes we were discussed so making a resonating cavity means whatever be the medium we have we have to make one surface of that as a fully reflecting surface and the opposite to that surface we have to make as a partially reflecting surface this we can do by silvering uh, the surfaces uh, grinding polishing all that processes we can apply so that we can make one surface as fully reflecting or there is partially reflecting surface and now here again if you go with the process of uh, absorption then metastable state how it those are formed and all that you know so here if a photon is emitted because of transition from this excited or metastable state to ground state this do stimulated emission so the number of photons those are increases so that their amplitude increases means their energy intensity increases and with those many number of photons if it strike to this partially uh, reflecting wall and if suppose their energy is not enough to cut or pass this partially reflecting wall what is going to happen those will reflect back now during reflection from this partially reflecting wall again they will do more and more stimulated emission so this number again goes on increasing and their energy becomes too too high and as they get incident on fully reflecting wall this fully reflecting wall definitely will not allow those to pass so again they get reflected back so every time you see as they reflect back and forth in these two walls the number of photons that increases and once their energy or their intensity energy becomes too high to cut this partially reflecting wall then from this partially reflecting wall it come out as a intense monochromatic highly directional beam of light to which actually we call as laser laser beam so that is the role of this resonating cavity these are what we have few important lasing actions that all of us should know in formation of laser thank you